it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden project. So today we are switching out my soaker hoses for a drip irrigation system. Last year we did a drip system for my porch and my window boxes and it is fabulous. We also installed a grid system with this brown inline drip tubing at my mom's house. And it works so much better. I love the soaker hoses and they are a less expensive alternative to get started. But even with our mild winters, mine are constantly popping holes all winter long. And the pressure needed to get from one end all the way to the other end of a soaker hoses is constantly popping holes in this bed specifically. And it doesn't even make it up around the tree. So we're going to go ahead, switch that out, starting with this bed, and we are going to do all the way along the front of the house as well. So when you're doing a system like this, ideally you want to make a grid, a closed circuit, so that the pressure can go evenly across the entire grid instead of starting at one end and moving to the other end. So we already have a spot down here at the bottom of the garden where the water will come across from the house into the system at the bottom. Then, right here where all the dirt is, I just dug a trench and I put in a new big PVC pipe and I'm going to bring a second piece of hose up and start the grid here at the top to go down as well. So water will come into this bed from two sides and it will meet in the middle where the entire grid will be able to fill with even pressure and even water. And that should give the plants in this bed a lot better water this year and improve all the years to come. So we're going to get started. As you can see, I have laid this bed out in a circle. We will use connectors to connect everything. I've got tees and elbows and straightaways. I will link everything down below, but we're going to do a lot of time lapsing and then I will stop and kind of show you what we're doing. Helicopters are hovering today, so hope you can hear me. Okay, so while we have the brown tubing with the emitters every 12 inches, 18 inches, that will actually water our garden beds, we also have a black half inch drip tubing with no emitters. And this is what we use to get our water from the faucet to the garden bed. So I am going to go through the trench, through the pipe that I put under this path with this all the way over to the house where we will connect it to the faucet. So I have two sections from last year's project. I'm going to see if one of them is going to be long enough because that would be great. Here's a closer look at the black tubing coming out of the pipe and where it comes out on this side. It will fill that in and then it comes over. We trenched it to about here. So let's take out these soaker hoses so I'm not gonna trench it any further now, but it will come right back and connect. This drip tube right here is the one for my porch. So there will be another line that goes from the faucet this will connect in with a T and then it will come over here. I'll have to unearth it, but you can see the green hose. That will be black tube and it goes through another pipe to come out right here. And the pipe is really just to protect the black tubing because it is, you know, easily crushed when we're going on this path, especially because I take my wheelbarrow on this path a lot with heavy things, the pipe will protect that. If you are not on a main path, you don't necessarily need a pipe. You can just trench it through the dirt. So let's go ahead, start connecting things. All right, so on this side, we are going to use a T-shaped coupler to connect our black hose to both of our brown hoses. Now this guy is in the right spot. So 
let's go ahead bring this guy over and I cut it right here insert our teeth So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to follow this line all the way around, making sure to tack it down with landscape staples all the way around in all the right places so that my plants have the right water. And then when I get back to this side, I will cut it and finish it off. All right, y'all, so now that we have our emitters, uh, drip tube with the emitters running through the bag, we need to replace the hose that is going through a pipe here, same as up there where we dug a new one. This is the pipe we did last time. So we need to replace this hose with our black drip tube, and it's going to run all the way along the side of the house to the faucet. So this particular hose has a lot of problems. This is where it connected and the pressure to go up the hill from here was too much. And so instead of keeping this hose, we're going to get rid of it. It's trash. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it. We're going to take our black tube to this hose and see if we can pull it through. I might need to dig this out a little bit. All right, so now the black tube is through the pipe. We will pull it all the way down to the faucet and then connect here and here and re-bury the tube. And this right here, besides, you know, walking on top of this and the tube protecting, or the PVC pipe, protecting our black hose from me walking on it or me wheeling a heavy wheelbarrow over it, the pipe allows you to put new things through it without having to redig everything up. Because if this hose had just been buried under here, we probably would have had to redig it up to switch it out. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the hose all the way down. There's mom to right behind mom where the faucet is. And we're going to connect it to the faucet so that we can turn on the water to this bed. Um, we had to wait for the rest of the teas to come. So we're gonna put a couple more cross sections in here. Don't know what this is. It's like this foamy, moldy stuff that just sprang up overnight. And then um, I do wanna put some cross sections on this side of the tree. So like parallel to the tree. But we're just going to keep on connecting everything, starting by pulling that through. And then we will connect it down here. And we will connect the pipe that 
the, uh, the tube that we dug in right here as well so that everything's connected. And then from the house, it will come over. We'll come up the hill here and enter at this side. And it will continue here and enter at this side so that everything's on a closed circuit and that will give us even water pressure. Let's do it. We are almost done. You can see we've gone all the way around the bed and now we're just connecting a few cross pieces that I spliced in at the back so that this entire large section has water. So, see, it's pretty much where I want it to go. And you can see we're gonna do one here and one there so that everything in this middle area has water. Also, I want to get this big weed out of here. Weeds. These pansies are just about done for the season. Next month they'll be coming out and we'll be putting new pretty things in here, but for the moment, they're fine. We'll work around them. Sometimes the teas are a little hard to get in, but that's good. Because that means that they're also hard to get out. Right, so now we're gonna splice it right here. Now when you're splicing the hose, you need to make sure that you're cutting in between your emitters. So right here, there's a bump out with a little hole bump out with a little hole. Those are emitters, so we can cut this right in between. Perfect. Take this out just because it's easier to work with when it's not stapled down. Add it in. A little staple right on the crosshairs. Keep it down. Put one back in by my lamb's ear. Saw when I took out that old soaker hose, a lot of the soaker hose was under the lamb's ear. Since the lamb's ear is a ground cover, it will grow over your hoses. I'm not gonna dig up the lamb's ear to put this hose under it, but. As the lamb's ear grows up, it'll kind of take over, so it'll be fine. All right, so this one, I think,
I'm going to be mulching over all of this so you won't be able to see it once all the new mulch is on. But in the meantime, let's see how it's laid out. starting to bloom you guys so excited All right, so I am a hot mess, but got all of the drip installed through this garden bed, through the long garden bed, and up around the tree, which is fabulous. So this was the main goal. Obviously, like I said earlier, we still need to mulch everything, but there is water Plants are much happier. The soaker hoses worked fine for what they were, but I was having to really replace them a lot and uh, fix them a lot, especially with our winters. And we have very mild winters, so this should work much better. It doesn't waste as much water, and it lets you really give specific plants more water or add in more sections as need be. So you can see for this garden bed, we went all the way around, spliced in right here. And then we went across everywhere the plants needed extra water throughout this bed. We have a bunch of tiger lilies here and foxgloves that will be coming up. So a little extra water there. Went right by the wisteria and the hydrangea little iris just planted <laughs> you guys might have noticed some new plants popped up in the middle of this water video but i just planted these salvia and some daisies and uh the oak leaf hydrangea is starting to leaf out so all of these things were really wilting and uh now they're doing much better they needed needed water it is only february here and we are already in the 80s so it's going to be a very hot summer, I think. But so far, so good. I only set this for three minutes, so it's already off, but it came out all the way down. And then you can see we, mom and I did this one the other day. This entire section here took two rolls of drip tube. So we did one full roll that went all the way around and it connected right here 
So right at this T, left and right, that is a full loop. Then we started with our second piece and we ran it all the way down. And then we just did, as mom calls them, two bump outs for these front sections. The ranunculus even are starting to pop up a little more since they started getting regular water. And then once last piece, as we went around the tree this way with a reverse bump in. <laughs> but as you can see, everything seems to be doing well. Um, let me pop back here and I'll show you. I have a few spots running off of the window boxes. You can see how the window boxes are popped into drip back here where individual plants are getting extra water, specifically my hydrangeas. So this hydrangea here has an extra quarter inch tube that comes along and it just pops in down here at the base with a little emitter that is missing. So I'm gonna have to sort that out, but there's an emitter that goes on the end here. And so this is why after winter you wanna go around and check everything because that's supposed to have like a two gallon emitter or something on the end and it must have popped off at some point but you could pop in with this same kind of hose instead of coming off the window boxes I could have just popped it right off of this brown tube right here put an emitter straight to it and not need to run this tube across my walkway which will probably switch that um, so as I'm running these all summer, if any of the plants look like they need more water, I can just pop in an extra emitter straight to that plant and it will get extra water. So that is one of the big benefits of a drip system. So I'm going to go and get cleaned up. It's kind of, I don't know what my neighbor is doing all of a sudden, but uh, it's kind of getting a little shady. It is supposed to rain this afternoon. So maybe we won't need the drip till tomorrow. I will see y'all in the next video. If you want to see more of the uh, setting up process of the drip installation to the faucet, um, when we did our window boxes, I did a whole video on that. So I will link that. You can go check out all of the inner workings, how to set that up to your faucet it is part of the first part of that video. So hope this helped you if you are looking to set drip up to your garden beds and I will see you next time. Bye.